Hi, I'm Jacqueline. And I'm Courtney, and this is Caffeinated Crimes. Welcome back, and happy whatever day you guys are listening to this. It's a Sunday for us. <laughs> I don't know. Intros are hard, guys. I just I never know how to start out, and sometimes I just say what comes out of my mouth, so... <laughs> Happy whatever. <laughs> I mean, if it's also for us uh, daylight savings, so we lost an hour. So yep. our banter is an hour. It, it went with that hour. We lost <laughs> our uh, our speaking skills. <laughs> yes. So it's a great time to record a podcast for your ears where we speak. <laughs> but Courtney was not very happy about our 8 a.m. workout this morning since it was really <laughs> 7 a.m. for our bodies, but you know what? Yeah, we did it. that was a rough one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I looked at my phone, it said, like, 7.40, and I was like, <sighs> man, 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 that's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but, you know, Courtney went to bed early at 1.30 last night, guys, <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was like, because Kevin was like, one, it's only like one thirty, And I'm like, okay, but it's like 2.30 because we lose an hour. So I'm already in the future now. <laughs> like, also, I don't think... I'm prepping for that hour. <laughs> I have never used the words only one thirty in my entire life. Unless maybe it's referring to like eating dinner. And I'm like, oh, it's only one thirty. <laughs> like, I can't imagine when I would ever use that context because... One thirty does not exist in my brain, although I'm sure it will soon with a newborn, but currently one thirty does not exist in my brain. Which, okay, I was thinking about this the other day. So in our Teresa Parker episode, we were talking about Sam going on a date at like 2 a.m. or something. We're like, that's crazy. Uh-huh. And then I thought about it. And the night I met Kevin, it was like a Thursday night at like 1.30 a.m. And I was at a bar and he came and met me. And I was like, ooh, I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> oh, yeah. you just doing the thing, Courtney. Yeah, it was. There was this amazing, amazing bar in Knoxville called Sassy Ann's. If you know, you know. Um, and they <laughs> closed. And it's very sad. But Thursday night was like their night. Like that is the night you went. It was amazing. I miss it. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think I've ever gone to a bar on a weeknight. Ever. I'm trying to think. No, I mean, I don't even really like going out to dinner on a weeknight. Like, (laughs) weeknights are out. I mean. Let me tell you, though. Once COVID is over and it is safe, your girl's going to get turned, like, every weekend. (laughs) I'm going to be out until 2 a.m. every night. I'm going to be in the bars, in the clubs. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. I can't wait. (laughs) I'll be up feeding a baby, texting Courtney while she's drunk at the club, because we'll be awake at the same time, just doing very different things. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Um, As far as true crime news this week, very sad true crime news. Is true crime news ever good? I guess sometimes it can be good. Anyway, so... As I'm sure everyone has heard by this point, since you know we record ahead of time, um, it did come out this week that 33-year-old Sarah Everard um, in the United Kingdom was murdered by an off-duty police officer, Wayne Cousins, while walking home. So, um, if you guys are on Twitter, I'm sure you've seen all of the outrage. Um, One, just the fact that it's still not safe for women to walk home alone in 2021. The fact that it was an off-duty police officer. And then the fact that people are using this as an opportunity to provide safety tips for women instead of us, you know, trying to teach men that they should not murder women instead. So. And then in true police fashion, uh, a vigil was held for her. And the police showed up in their full armor and gear. And they ended up arresting people um, for not following COVID guidelines when... The lady who I saw getting arrested was wearing a mask. I mean, I think this is something you could just kind of over, like, just turn a blind eye for just a few hours. Like, let them have a vigil for her. Like, one of your own murdered this girl walking home, but now we need to care about, which I get the United Kingdom has been more strict than the U.S. with COVID policies anyway, but okay. Yeah, and um, I know a lot of the crowd was chanting, uh, shame on you and arrest your own, um, and good for them, because yes. it's ridiculous. Uh, it's just ridiculous. This is keep keeps happening. Will there ever be an end in sight? Who knows? Yeah. It's the thing. Super sad. Um, we'll keep you guys updated if 
anything more comes of that. Um, again, that just happened this week as of the time that we are recording this, so there might be more information out there by the time this comes out. Um, but we'll keep you guys updated. Also, speaking of psychopaths, kind of a uh, segue, I don't know. Um, this morning after our workout, our friend Tiffany, which you guys probably feel like you know by now, <laughs> told us that she read this thing about a question of how to determine if you are a psychopath. So Courtney and I are not psychopaths, so that's good to know. But it's kind of weird, so we wanted to talk to you guys about it. Yeah, so basically it's like... I think she read it. It's like you're supposed to close your eyes and imagine you're in a forest and like you're walking through, you hear all the sounds and then you hear something behind you like breathing in your ear. What are you picturing? And like you're scared, like as you're walking through, like your heart's pounding and you're like, yeah, like you're feeling afraid. Yeah. So it's like, what do you picture behind you? So go ahead and think of that answer. Say it out loud. Okay, cool. So if you said dog, (laughs) apparently you're a psychopath because... According to whoever made up this test, people can't be scared of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, I said a human, because what's scarier than a human? True. I said a bear, because, you know, I don't know. I'm from Tennessee. I imagine bears in the woods. <laughs> so. I just also don't really picture a dog, because I imagine someone breathing in my ear. So yeah, I imagine dogs to be, like, at my waist, and I wouldn't really hear a dog there but wouldn't like tickle your like senses of like breathing right behind you but I also know people who are like really really scared of dogs or were attacked by dogs as kids or all that so I don't think that means you're a psychopath (laughs) Um, yeah definitely not but let us know what you guys think if you have opinions on that little test and what you think it could mean and whether or not you think saying a dog in that scenario would make you a psychopath because we don't necessarily agree, but maybe there's something we're missing that, you know, you can let us know. Yeah. And then that made me think of the other one, which I found a Snopes article on, which means, and Snopes said it was false. This isn't a real test, but it was the (laughs) one about a girl at her mother's funeral and she meets a man she's never met before and she's in love with him. He's the one, all that. The next week she kills her sister. What's her motive? And I guess if you answer that she hopes to see the guy again. You're a psychopath. (laughs) Um, But Snopes says that's false. (laughs) Snopes says that did not happen. So, (laughs) Um, All right, so I guess we are ready to get into today's case, um, which is a super sad one. They're all super sad ones, but, you know. So this was a recommendation... Like before we started the podcast, when we were reaching out to family and friends and we're like, oh, give us ideas. And then we like started our list and then, you know, other new stuff came up that we kind of dove into instead. But again, speaking of Tiffany, Tiffany recommended this one way back, like over a year ago at this point. So we're finally getting to it. You're welcome. So (laughs) it takes us a little bit sometimes. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, but it's all good. So our sources for this episode are The Criminal Journal, an ABC News article, Investigation Discovery, Bowling Green Daily News, People.com, and a relatively evil episode called Living Lies. So Lauren and Matthew Phelps were only married 10 short months before their marriage turned deadly. Lauren Hugelmeyer once lived in Bowling Green with her family and attended Holy Trinity Lutheran School. She also attended the church at Holy Lutheran in the 90s before her family moved to North Carolina. Matthew Phelps also lived in Bowling Green and attended middle school with Lauren. They reconnected years later online when they were 26. So he went on Instagram and liked a bunch of her posts, which sometimes I, I feel like that never really ends well, maybe. Yeah. Not usually. I mean, I have started talking to people after that happened, but obviously that didn't go anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) And I feel like there's a difference, too, with like, oh, I found you on social media and I reached out versus, oh, I found you and now I'm liking all of your old posts. Like, I don't know. That always kind of creeps me out a little bit. But Lauren and Matthew started talking and they discovered they had a lot in common, including religion. Um, So she was very religious and he had also gone to Bible college. And by the time they started talking, things just got really serious really quickly. Which I feel like happens a lot with like religious couples. (laughs) Um, Yeah. You know, you kind of like, you just, you get, you get down quick. (laughs) Yeah, I think, and that has a lot to do with the negativity around sex before marriage. So they're like, Mm -hmm. okay, 
and my only intention in a relationship is to get married versus other people don't always view it that way. I feel like religious people are more likely to only want a relationship to end in marriage, so things tend to escalate quickly. Yeah. So Lauren's father, Dale, was a little hesitant about their long-distance relationship and thought that it was moving a little quickly. Um, And Lauren was really, really close with her father. So Matt's mother didn't really seem to like Lauren or really care for her, didn't seem to approve of her, and she actually showed up to their engagement party in a white dress, which... Which is just like a slap in the face. Yeah, you don't you don't do that. You don't wear white to any kind of bridal event ever. <laughs> like, yeah, because usually, like, if someone does it at this point, it feels very intentional. Oh yeah. I think it's less so somebody wearing white and more so like, oh, you did this on purpose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So Lauren was a really hard worker and she had big goals for herself and her future and she just really wanted to work to get there to meet those goals. She sometimes worked up to four jobs at one time um, and she was an auditor, she babysat, she worked in the church nursery and she had a business on the side selling candles. So she was hustling for sure. Yeah. So Lauren and Matthew were married on November 11th, 2016 and they had a Star Wars themed wedding but very subtly so it wasn't too over the top. Yeah, like, she wasn't wearing, like, Princess Leia bun, but they did have a few pictures with lightsabers, so. (laughs) Well, you know, you gotta add in your interest, you know? It makes sense. Exactly. Um, But their marriage was off to a rocky start because Matthew seemed to be jealous of one of her best friends who was a male. Um, And he said that he was jealous because Matthew had been married before and his ex-wife went on a mission trip, and when she came back, she said that she had had an affair and she left him. So, as we've talked about before... Your past relationships is not an excuse to treat your current partner like shit because you think they're going to do the same thing. That's not how that works. Yeah. Um, And Matthew even said that his ex-wife said, I don't love you. I never loved you. So he's coming into this relationship with a lot of baggage. Yeah. And I mean, that is heartbreaking and horrible to go through, but you need to kind of work that out within yourself. Yes. And trust your current partner. (laughs) Definitely. So at this point, Matt was getting really depressed. Um, He kept getting jobs, but then quitting them because he wanted to stay home and play video games. Um, He didn't want to go to church anymore, and that really bothered Lauren because that was very important to her. And at the time they got together, it was really important to both of them. So this has to be difficult for her to, you know, what do you mean you don't want to do this anymore? Like you told me, like, you were as invested, you know, in this relationship with God as I was. Yeah. And now suddenly you're just changing? Like, yeah. And and so soon after they got married, too. Mm-hmm. So her brother-in-law said it seemed like whatever Lauren like liked or loved, Matt was just doing the opposite of, and just like he didn't care at all. So he was acting really differently from the Matt that he was when they were dating. Um, and he started spending more money than Lauren was making. So again, not off to a great start with this marriage. No, money problems, I think, are probably like the leading cause of couples breaking up or divorcing. Oh, yeah. like, I would have to say, like, that has to be, like, number one why people are... That and probably, like, affairs are probably, like, yeah, 90% of it. <laughs> Definitely agree. So Matthew had a journal where he would write and talk about how he didn't understand how Lauren loved him and, like, he felt inferior to her and he felt left out because of how close Lauren's family was. And Matt was also stealing money out of Lauren's purse and out of a fund they had set aside to save up for a Disney trip. Um, And he totaled at least over $2,000 in the video games that he was playing in one month. In one month, he spent $2,000 on video games. Yeah. And like we said before, Lauren's out here busting her butt trying to... four jobs. (laughs) Four jobs, you know doing all this stuff to make extra money, to save up for a trip, to, you know, reach all her goals, and he's blowing it on video games. Yes. I'd kill him. Right? (laughs) So, (laughs) obviously, Lauren's frustrations were growing. So, they eventually made a budget, and things seemed to be getting better, Um, but on August 31st, a woman Matt used to work with came to the door, and he left with her. Um, So, this obviously upset Lauren that her husband is just leaving with another woman right in front of her. Um, He ignored her calls and her texts, and then an hour later, he finally responded and texted her saying, go ahead and eat without me. I'm having too much fun with her. What? What? Yeah, like, your wife just worked probably two jobs that day and is now cooking you dinner. And you're like, oh, by the way, this girl showed up. I gotta go. Yeah. Bye. 
You just go ahead and eat by yourself. I'm going to go keep hanging out with this coworker. So this was Lauren's breaking point. She told her sister that she was done, that he was ruining her life, and she was ready to leave the relationship. Lauren also believed that he was cheating and had been with another woman, um, and her sister Beth had spoken to her on August 31st and told her how they had been arguing about his alleged cheating, and she told him then that she planned to leave. Beth says she believes that this is the point that Matthew made the decision that Lauren was not going to leave him, even if that meant that he had to kill her. So at around 1.10 in the morning on September 1st, 2017, officers with the Wake County Sheriff's Office were dispatched to a home on Patuxent Drive after receiving a 911 call from Matthew. He told dispatch he had consumed a large dose of carisidin cough and cold medicine and went to sleep. When he woke up, he found Lauren dead on the bedroom floor in the fetal position. He told dispatch, quote, I had a dream and then I turn on the lights and she's dead on the floor. I have blood all over me and there's a bloody knife on the bed and I think I did it. Oh my God, she didn't deserve this. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I'm so scared. So Matthew claims that the cough and cold medicine left him in a haze, but he thinks he could be responsible for her murder. Um, and he did take time to clean himself up before police arrived. And a police did end up arresting him at his residence. And he was booked in Wake County Jail on second degree murder charges. And he was held without bond. So, during his initial interviews, he appeared very calm and didn't show any emotion, which you think that you were just in a haze and killed your wife, and you're like, okay, that's fine. Hmm. Whoops. You know, yeah, if it happened the way uh, you said it did, you would be freaking out a little bit more at this point. Yeah, and you were freaking out on your 911 call, and now you're just, I'm fine. (laughs) Yeah. Mm, Nope. So, paramedics transported Lauren to Wake Med Health and Hospitals in Raleigh, where she was pronounced dead. Um, And the results from her autopsies revealed that she suffered 123 cuts and stab wounds to her face, neck, torso, and arms. And 44 of those were just around her face and neck. And some were four inches deep. Like, that is excessive. Yes. Like, that's horrible and it's clearly a crime of like rage and passion like it's literally just 123 like that's in that that's crazy like like and either the first few were deep enough that she died a long time ago and you just kept on or you did some of them shallow enough that like you were just torturing her for who knows how long and it makes me kind of think um in the lululemon murders Mm -hmm. um, which is one that we will cover someday yes uh it's a similar thing where someone was stabbed a bunch of times and i remember the judge saying he sat there and just went like boom 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 and it took him like 10 minutes and i'm sure this 123 would be like yeah i mean that is a lot that is beyond the point of like i did this accidentally (laughs) yeah for sure Uh, and it does appear that She was asleep on her side, and he came in and stabbed her, and he rolled her over and stabbed her in the face, and it does appear that she did try to fight back, so she was alive for at least some of these stab wounds. Mm -hmm. A toxicology report revealed that Matthew did have cold medicine in his system the night of the murder, but not enough that would cause hallucinations. And a search of his computer also revealed the week before Lauren's murder, he was Googling about carisidin and mixing it with alcohol and the various effects, Hmm. which is pretty odd. Convenient. you accidentally took too much, but then you also knew how much not to take. (laughs) Yeah. You don't, um, if you research that before, it's kind of hard to make that look like an accident. Yeah, and then on his computer, they did find a secret Instagram account where he had lots of pictures of Satan and death, and he was posting a lot of anti-Christian stuff, and he was, like, he pretended to be, like, a very strong Christian man when he met Lauren, and now clearly Uh that was all just a front, like, it wasn't true. Yeah. Um, He also had a fascination with serial killers and would post pictures of himself as the main character in American Psycho, Patrick Bateman, who's a Wall Street investment banker by day and a serial killer by night, which it's a great movie, (laughs) but I don't think anyone should be trying to be the main character in that one. (laughs) No, you you shouldn't want to be that person and to compare yourself to that person. Maybe not a good idea. Enjoy the movie. Think it's a great film. Think Christian Bale killed it. Ooh, that was bad. (laughs) That was a bad (laughs) choice of words. Think Christian Bale, like, really 
succeeded in his acting. In that movie. <laughs> um, but don't try to be him. No. Just don't do that. He also posted, everyone thinks I'm a serial killer. Hashtag found an angel to kill. That's an interesting hashtag. So, yeah. Very, very interesting. And I know Lauren's family was heartbroken oh, yes. when they saw this because it's like you're talking about our daughter like disgusting that's horrible one of Matthew's friends also told law enforcement that he had told him that he wondered what it would be like to kill someone hmm. I feel like we see that so much like people always just being like oh yeah he said uh, you know I want to know what it's like to kill someone like no one's ever said that to me nope like you don't think that's a little bit of a like red flag <laughs> And how does that conversation come up? Like, how do you... I mean, Courtney and I talk about death and murder all kinds, like, all the time. And we've never had a conversation that would lead to, hmm, I've always wondered what it's like to kill someone. What? No. No. Yeah, and it's not even just like, how could someone do that? Like, how, you know, whatever. It's literally like... I wonder what that's like. Oh, yeah. I wonder what it's like. Please don't. So... Two months before Lauren's death, Lauren revealed horrifying details about her husband's previous marriage, including claims that he assaulted his prior wife and lied to her about the nature of their separation. So now she's finding out his ex-wife didn't go on a mission trip and, like, cheat on him. Mm -hmm. He made that up. Yeah. And Lauren's mother, Lori, said that he was so good at manipulating the situation. I'm sure that he was, like, a huge gaslighter, too. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Definitely. So... Brooke Truitt was Matthew's first wife, and she said he did cheat on her when they were dating, but she eventually forgave him. And Brooke said that he also just would spend money like crazy and spend money they didn't have. And she was working a full-time job, like, trying to make sure they could pay their bills. So a lot of, like, what Lauren was going through where he's just like, he needs to get him a sugar mama or something if he's wanting to, <laughs> to try and live this lifestyle. Yeah, no, no, no woman's going to put up with that. Sorry, sir. Yeah. So, Matthew initially stated he couldn't remember killing his wife because he'd taken the cough and cold medicine before falling asleep, but during his October 2018 court hearing, he admitted to Judge Paul Ridgway that he slashed and stabbed Lauren to death in what appeared to be an attack. So now he's like, yeah, you're right. I I knew what I was doing. Like, yeah. We're shocked, Matthew. No. We're all shocked that that's what happened. None of us saw that coming. Nope. He did apologize to the victim's family, and he said, This was a senseless, mindless act, and I regret every step that led me in that direction. I feel like a monster, one of wretched, a part of the darkness we don't speak of. That darkness consumed me until I was blind to the path I had taken and deaf to my own cries for help. This this is not a place for you to deliver your monologue, Matthew. Like, what? what why are you trying to write a poem about how you feel about brutally murdering your wife. Like, what even are those words? No. Yeah. And, like, I get, like, he was probably experiencing some depression, but millions of people are going through depression, have depression, have been depressed, and they don't kill their spouses. No. Like, this isn't some excuse. And that's just what bugs me is people, like, use mental health to be like, well, you know, I'm depressed, so obviously I did this. Like, no, there's... Don't be, like, giving mental health a stigma because you're an asshole. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I think especially the amount of rage and torture that went into this murder. Like, not that it would be any more acceptable if it was a quicker death, but this was planned out and this was, like, pure rage. This wasn't a spur of the moment that, like, you kept going and kept going. Like, that just makes it all the more worse. All the... (laughs) <laughs> words are hard I don't know like we said daylight savings time guys sorry yeah and like he had so many times to stop and Lauren probably could have lived like yeah obviously she'd have extensive damage like from the stab wounds but if you had stopped like towards the beginning like when she was fighting back like there could have been a chance that she she would have been able to live yeah so when Lauren's father Dale was asked if he forgives Matthew for killing Lauren, he replied, "No, never. I mean, I'll take him to my grave and I'll still hate him." Which I understand. Like, yeah, you should. I, I hate how so many times they try to make you feel like you should forgive something like this, and it's like, no. Like, if you want to 
for yourself, you go right ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. But no one should make you feel like you should be able to forgive everything because everything doesn't deserve forgiveness. Sorry. Yeah, and that's the thing, too, is it's like Matthew was clearly not actually sorry, and so you shouldn't have to accept, like, a half-ass apology. And, like, everyone heals in their own way. Some people have to forgive to, like, move on, but, Uh like, you don't have to. Like, be mad. Like, hate him. Exactly. Please. He then explained how Matthew planned the whole thing from the get-go, in my opinion, right from day one to the end. He said, the last time I saw my daughter, she came over looking for a three ring binder. She was nervous and a little edgy and it didn't look like Lauren at all. She looked a mess. I regret it now that I didn't ask more questions about what was going on. And he really believes Lauren was abused by Matthew, but was too scared to tell anyone. And he just regrets not asking more questions or seeing the warning signs, which is so heartbreaking because it's like, yeah, you probably couldn't have prevented this, but I know like how you're just like every little thing you're like what could I have done different to like prevent this yeah and that's so sad that especially too because you don't think of those things in the moment like when you look back on it you're like oh now I can kind of see that situation a little bit differently but who is sitting there in the moment just something is like your daughter seems a little bit off you know it's not like she was like showing up covered in like bruises every day and you know things like that he's like she just seemed kind of like edgy and like nervous and just kind of having an off day so like you shouldn't put that blame on yourself but it has to be so easy to look back on something like that and wonder what could have been you know if you had recognized it but again why would you like there's nothing in that scenario that would make you think something like this would happen you know and I know it's such a tricky situation too with like people who are being abused or in abusive relationships like if you start asking questions that person's abuser will usually make you like stop talking to the person or alienate you from your friends and I know it must be so hard for Dale and Lori like you know as a parent you just want to protect your child like at all cost and then this happens and it's just it's just really heartbreaking absolutely So, after Matthew pled guilty to first-degree murder, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He will die and rot in prison. Bayer, who makes Chrysidin, released a statement that there is no evidence that the medicine is responsible for violent behavior. (laughs) They're like, yep, this dude's just an asshole. It's not us. But here we are again, ruining uh, some pain reliever cough medicine over-the-counter stuff for you. (laughs) I know, I just thought about that because I was like, man, we just did Tylenol and then we did Excedrin for a Patreon bonus episode. Now we're doing cough medicine. Like, we're just making you terrified of all the drugs. But like they said, there is no evidence that that cold medicine has anything to do with this violent behavior. That was just an asshole trying to find some way to get out of brutally murdering his wife. Yeah, and I mean, that's the case in all three of the Tylenol, Excedrin, and this. Yeah. It wasn't the company. It wasn't, it it was just an asshole somewhere. (laughs) It's always just an asshole somewhere. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) But yeah, that is the very, very sad tale of Lauren Phelps and the murder by her new husband. They'd only been married 10 months at the time that he murdered her, so. Yeah, that's supposed to be like (sighs) the honeymoon phase, you know, like the happy time and you know before you have kids and before like life really gets shitty you know what I'm saying (laughs) like it's supposed to be like the good times and yeah Matthew's just an asshole and wait till you guys see the picture of him because oh my god Kevin was like listening to me when I was like watching the relatively evil thing and then he saw a picture and he's like that's him that's him yeah that's the guy who thinks he's Christian Bale in American Psycho (laughs) Like, my exact, like, <laughs> reaction when I first saw his picture. I was like, oh. Oh, okay. Oh. That, that's you? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, try to bring this one up. Courtney, what is your perk of the week? Okay, my perk of the week is going to be very Jacqueline-esque. Because I'm not going <laughs> to pick one thing. I'm going to pick a broad <laughs> thing and then go into details. And it's about food. Is one food. of them about food? It's all about yep. food. <laughs> So. <laughs> it's a very jack up perk of the week. <laughs> so this is a shorter episode, so I feel like I can give you a little bit of deep dive into this, the amazing food I've had over the past few days. So, 
Um, I'm going to start off and say we had a new place open up by our apartment called South Knox Nutrition. So they'll make like meal replacement shakes and these like loaded teas that are supposed to have like energy and like healthy stuff for you, like mineral, like different vitamins that are for like focused and mind and digestion. Anyway, they're really good. <laughs> they give you a lot of energy. Courtney's trying to put that energy tea in an IV. <laughs> so I am literally, we went in there yesterday and the guy was like, you guys have been in like three times this week, haven't you? And we're like, it's like four. They opened Monday. They've been open a week. Um, we did say we're going to have to limit it to two days a week though, because we can't be spending all our money. Yeah. Place. But up. it's local business. The sweetest couple I've ever met. They were so nice about like my nut allergy, making sure mm-hmm. everything was good and like I wasn't going to break out in hives or my throat <laughs> close up, but... They were it's super always a nice. nice thing when a person <laughs> cares about that. <laughs> so I'm going to give them a shout out. And then um, I got a surprise from my parents. So we do weekly dinners at their house. We usually get takeout. Sometimes, like, they'll cook. So my dad was making his chili, which has always been, like, my favorite thing mm-hmm. in the world. And then he also made wings with it, which is, like, my favorite meal. <laughs> and it was delicious. Then I had... Pizza Palace on Friday, (laughs) and I got a cake from Magpies, and it's like the best cake I've ever had. I would die for this chocolate cake. I had a steak last night that I cooked, (laughs) and then today I'm going to go to an outdoor restaurant and get some seafood, and I'm going to eat so much. It's Kevin and I's like anniversary weekend, so I'm going like balls to the wall, clearly. (laughs) And I'm just eating everything, and then I'll crack back down on Monday and like, get get that under control and reap the the, <laughs> the consequences on the scale from this weekend but i'm just gonna go into all my food it was so good i've been eating so good i mean it's just amazing anniversary calories don't count you know so it's all good <laughs> yeah and this cake guys it's just so good if you're ever in knoxville stop by magpies They usually have like slices of cake, cookies, pies. You can order a custom one, which is like what I did. They're amazing. Give them some love because it's good. I mean, yeah, Courtney sent me a picture and I'm like, I really want cake now. And I was going to go get cake yesterday, but then I say we got busy. And by we got busy, I mean Andrew pressure washed outside for five hours and I sat on the porch and read my book. So it was a busy day for both of us. And... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> then by the time we got around to getting dinner, the place that we like to go to for cake is already closed. But they are open on Sundays, so today is Sunday, in case you didn't know that in <laughs> recording world. So maybe we'll go get some cake today because Courtney's got me wanting cake, you know? And you can't just, like, send a pregnant lady a bunch of pictures of cake. So <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Gotta get you some cake. So now that I went on a long tangent and made everyone hungry... Jacqueline, what is your perk of the week? So my perk of the week is not about food this week. I know it's shocking, but it's a book. So I don't know who recommended it to begin with, but then Courtney recommended it and I went to add it to my list that's in like my notes app on my phone. And I was like, oh, this is already here. So someone recommended it first and then Courtney recommended it. But anyway, I finally got around to reading it and it's called The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And it is just so, so good. So Wonderful book. Amazing. Highly recommend. A little bit different than like the type of stuff that I normally read. So I always appreciate that. Um, But yeah, you should definitely go check it out because it was amazing. Yeah. When I read it, I think I saw it because it won in one of the categories for Goodreads. So I saw that. And usually anything that wins in Goodreads that I find interesting, I'll just go ahead and put it on my, you know, I want to read shelf and come back to it. Um, and so, yeah, I think I put it on hold the library. It came available and I was reading it and I was hooked. I was like, this is cause it kind of starts off and you're like, wait a minute, like, where's this going? Mm-hmm. You know, like what's about to happen. And then it's, it's so good. It's so wonderful. It's amazing. And it's one of those two that like, I always like to predict the ending of books like you do. And I was so like, I went back and forth so many times that I'm like, I really don't know how this is going to end. Like, mm-hmm. Like, the ending makes sense, I understand it, but I feel like so many other endings would have made sense, too. So I like that, too, that it's not, like, super predictable. Also, speaking of books, um, so for Christmas, Courtney... There's a flying thing. Helicopter. (laughs) A UFO. Aliens. I don't know. 
We should leave that in. <laughs> Sometimes we gotta pause for helicopters, airplanes, motorcycles, birds. I don't know. So the aliens coming to probe us. You never know. <laughs> oh God. Please don't. <laughs> so for Christmas, Courtney got me a book, and Tiffany also got Courtney the same book. Yeah, it was so, so funny. <laughs> um, but I also read that one this week. It was a very quick read. It was really, really good. Um, it's called My Sister, the Serial Killer. I'm so sorry I'm going to mispronounce her name, but it's Oyinkan Braithwaite. Um, she is a Nigerian author. I hope the pronunciation is somewhat close. I couldn't really find a recording online of how to pronounce it. Um, but it was also really good. Yeah, I, when I went to read it, I texted Tiffany. I was like, finally getting to read this. And like less than 24 hours later, I was like, I finished it. And she was like, <laughs> no, but yeah, it was very short, but it was just, it was very like fast paced and very like, what's yeah. going to happen? And I thought it was really well done. It was really, really fun read. So I liked the writing style too. Cause sometimes like short books, like obviously I would have wanted more because I pretty much always finish a book wanting more, yeah. but I feel like it was very intentionally written to be that kind of short, mm-hmm. some parts vague that you're left kind of wonder, you know, like I feel like the, the writing style was intentional. A lot left to the yeah. imagination, which I kind of like too, because, you know, like with the little things movie where yeah. you're kind of like, it, it's like you can debate it and you, it leaves you thinking about it, which I think is like a good book. Agreed. You know what I mean? Like if you're sitting there like well, what about this? I wonder if it's that. I wonder if it's this, this, you know, what is it? But yes. And to prevent any spoilers, Courtney and I are going to have a conversation when we finish recording about the ending of that book. So if you guys have read it, reach out to us so we can have the same conversations. Yes, definitely. And if you guys have stuck around this far to listen to (laughs) our food and book corner... You're welcome. I think it's been about <laughs> 10 minutes just on Perk of the Week. <laughs> so if you guys are still here and you want to reach out to us about your food and your books and all the things, you can do so on Instagram at Caffeinated Crimes Pod, on Twitter at Caff Crimes Pod, that's C-A-F-F Crimes Pod. You can email us at Caffeinated Crimes Pod at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook at Caffeinated Crimes Podcast. And if you feel so inclined, if you have a little bit of extra money that you want to donate our way for us to make this podcast the best that it can be, and you also want to get some bonus content, some extra goodies, some face-to-face time with us, all the good things, you can do so over at patreon.com slash caffeinated crimes. And if you want to win free goodies, we're still doing our Apple Reviews giveaway, so once we get to 50, we will draw a name, and that person will win a pen, a sticker, and a $10 gift card to the coffee shop of their choice. Um, and again, remember, if you have access to multiple like Apple IDs and you do multiple, we'll put your name in every time. We don't care. <laughs> so as long as we get those reviews, just make sure you leave some kind of identifying information so we know who you are to find you. Um, yep. And... Now that you know all that, go have a cup of coffee. And don't commit a crime.